The bullies from Dade County are tearing through the association. Jimmy Butler just broke LeBron's Miami triple-double record against James himself on Sunday versus LA, giving his team the number one seed. While K. Lau is still out, Jimmy and Bam having played in the last four games together bodes well for Coach Spoh's squad building up a playoff rhythm in the early second half of 2021-22. Versus LA, Caleb Martin received 23 minutes, scored 15 crucial points, and had a massive steal to close it out down the stretch. Bam Adebayo had 14 and 8 on 6 for 10 shooting, while his backup Dwayne Deadman got an extremely limited 8 minutes. The old school center's 9 points ended up being valuable ones given the scrappy Lakers fought hard down the stretch. This video gives you an in-depth breakdown of the reasons for why the Miami Heat have gone on a tear and are officially on top of the Eastern Conference. Right quick, only 11.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes just a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is in the description for both those platforms. From 2010 to 2014, LeBron's historically dominant tenure with the Miami Heat saw him win two titles in four straight finals appearances and two regular season and finals MVPs. Braun also racked up a solid nine triple doubles, which the newest face of the franchise, Jimmy Butler, has already surpassed in only his third year with the organization. On Sunday against the LA Lakers at FTX Arena, by midway through the fourth quarter, Butler had 18 points, 12 dimes, and 10 boards, his 10th triple-double in Miami Heat threads, jumping ahead of Braun for most in franchise history. Two of the team's biggest offense manufacturers and Kyle Lowry, who's out right now for personal reasons, and Tyler Hero, who's out on health and safety. Those two being out has seen Jimmy adjust his game to more of a quarterbacking style. In his last four games, Jimmy Dime Dropper has posted two triple doubles. What stood out most to me is that Butler's two-way impact over these last few games has somewhat resembled the player we witnessed carry Miami to the finals back in 2020. He hasn't been too, too efficient, but Butler starting to find his flow is something fans of other top contenders definitely need to watch out for. Quickly, in terms of Sunday night, the Heat got out to a massive lead and hung on to it for the majority of the outing. As they have for most of the 2021-22 campaign, South Beach couldn't miss from downtown, using their three-point firepower to inaugurate the upper hand, but the feisty middle-of-the-pack Lakers with one of the best players on earth and King James at the head of the snake were incensed on making things interesting, going on a vicious run down the stretch. Having said that, give credit to the veteran-led Heat for staying poised and holding them off, in large part thanks to an incredible snatch from Caleb Martin, more in-depth analysis on Martin coming up. In addition to Butler's all-around dominance, Duncan Robinson had one of those nights where he catches fire, scoring 25 points on 8 of 13 shooting from the field, and 6 of 11 from beyond the arc. The loss for LA is LeBron's fifth in seven visits to Miami since leaving the franchise in the summer of 2014. Putting the Heat's 2022 campaign into perspective, if you could go back to October of 2021 and someone from the future told you that Miami's big three of Butler, Adebayo, and Lowry would only play 14 of the team's first 41 games together, you would have been devastated. Whatever you would have predicted Miami's record to be with their trio barely sharing the floor together, you would have been far off because Miami's current 30-17 record is good enough for first in the Eastern Conference, and also boding well for fans in Miami is the fact that they hold season series advantages over both the second place Nets, and they're up 2-0 in the series over the currently third-seeded Bulls. That's all despite 18 games missed from Jimmy Butler, 25 games missed from Bam Adebayo, and several missed from every other rotation player. The Heat have also played the fourth most amount of road games, only behind the Rockets, Hornets, and Magic with 26. Still though, Miami's on pace for their first 50-plus win season since the Braun, Wade, and Bosch Big 3 era, and are the only team other than the Suns and Bucks who post a top 8 rating both in offensive and defensive efficiency. So how have they managed to not just hang on, but thrive in the absence of their two biggest stars? Going all in for Kyle Lowry has most definitely paid off, and North Philly's finest deserve some respect for picking up the slack. K. Laus had to step up as a first slash second scoring option on a nightly basis. More importantly, it's Lowry's league fifth best 8.3 assists per game, plus his veteran leadership and experience, which kept the Heat afloat throughout that stretch. 
The impact Kyle's made with his playmaking, defense, shooting, and rim pressure simply cannot be overstated. The Heat have played with more undrafted players this year than any other team, and Lowry still found a way to get the very best of each and every one of them, turning them into unique role players offensively. The shocking production from Miami has come off the pine from the likes of Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, Omer Yurtsevin, and Caleb Martin. Due to injuries, even Udonis Haslam has been required to step in and play key minutes at various points of the year. As it turned out, Miami's depth, which once seemed like a massive concern, has now turned into one of the team's biggest strengths. Amongst the role players who's most impressed me is the former Charlotte Hornet Caleb Martin. His swift movement and three-point shooting allows Martin to be the perfect cog in Coach Spoh's system. With Bam as the point center on this play, handing it off to Struess at the top of the key, watch how Caleb sets the perfect wide down screen before quietly moving back to the right wing, then using fluid footwork to shuffle over to the corner, where Bam, who's gotten it back from the blitz Struess at this point, hits him for a wide open triple. Just brilliant offense. Backup center Dwayne Dedman has had a lot of internal competition after making his return to the lineup, as the undrafted Turkish 23-year-old center Omer Yurtsevin seems to have passed Dedman in the rotation. However, Dedman's re-overtaken Yurtsevin in the rotation, with Omer receiving a DNP last game and only seven minutes an outing prior versus Atlanta. But despite Omer's production, which I talked about in prior videos, it's easy to see why Eric Spolstra prefers Deadman over Big Yurt. Dwayne's on-court physicality and energy can get under the skin of his opponents and Russell Westbrook aggressively pulling the seven foot, 245 pounder down like he was the last rebound of a meaningless triple-double is the prime example of that. This flagrant foul on Carmelo was uncalled for, but it just goes to show you that Dwayne takes an extreme amount of pride in protecting the paint for Miami. You wouldn't expect it, but the Heat's fairly unknown eight-year pro in Deadman is currently sixth on the team in plus-minus, even ahead of two top Heat players in Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler. His value can be quantified by a few dominant qualities. For one, Deadman's a lethal offensive rebounder, which is exemplified on this possession on your screen, where Struess gets loose to find him down low, and after missing a bunny, Deadman mercilessly sticks with his shot, beasting through three Laker defenders, and then finishing with a contested layup over Stanley Johnson. Another trait in the center's game is his ability to elusively slip screens after baiting the defensive player into thinking he's about to make contact. In a pick and roll with Butler, as Mello and THT are slow to switch in this action, Deadman gets the entire restricted area to himself, Unfortunately, he fumbles the pass, but it's those explosive slips to the basket after faking the screen, which are throwing off defenses. Right here, Miami executes that action to perfection. This time, it's Gabe Vincent operating the set. He floats a pass to Dwayne on the roll, who catches and bursts through the lane for a swift finish while being sandwiched by two white shirts. Deadman's just been a beast all year in the short time he's been given per game. While many teams probably would have folded under the adversity that Miami's been forced to deal with, Eric Spolstra has done a fantastic job managing the rotation and keeping the ear of his locker room. Between the lines, Miami's responded stronger than even the most optimistic of fans could have predicted, and all signs point to brighter days lying ahead. Once Victor Oladipo and Markeith Morris return, the Heat will be one of the deepest teams in the NBA. They'll play the majority of their remaining games at home, and when all else fails, they have the best coach in the game running the show. In the words of ESPN analyst Kendra Perkins, them goons from Dade County are back. Many of Miami's upcoming games between now and the All-Star break are against teams they should beat, which will give them the opportunity to increase their advantage at the top of the East. What's Miami's biggest strength? Best answer in the comments down below gets next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Regel Diasparol, who answers with Bismack Biombo saying it's very rare for a player on a 10 day contract to be signed for the whole season and even rarer for them to have such an impact. Thanks for every take. This was D Flow. I hope you have a great one and I'll see you next video.